Hey, it's Coffee, eh? Now there's a lot of information out there that requires knowing the population tendencies. You know, and we read enough of times these words population tendency, population tendency, and you start losing track of what that really means. You know, I think a lot of players, you know, they say, oh, I did this because of the population tendency. But how much do, they, do you think they really know what the population tendency is? How much do you know? Well, that's why I made it one of my focuses in Math and Heads Up Sit and Goes to be able to construct population models and use them to make more money. And so one of the videos goes through specifically constructing population models, and I do this just by using Poker Tracker 4 um, to build a global alias. Now this is a method that's on 2 plus 2, but it can be tough to work through on your own. You know, I needed help working through it because it's tough. It involves SQL, it involves all these messy things. But in the end, it gives us something that's amazing because it makes us money by saving us time and our study of the population. Because what it will give us is it'll give us a way to find our population's average frequencies and ranges directly and easily from our database. And that's it. You know, that's our goal. Because when we know our population's average frequencies and ranges, we know the population. And this will help us a lot with our study. Because for instance, if we're thinking, you know, hey, I'm worried that I'm c-betting too many flops. I think the population isn't folding that much to my c-bets. How much are they folding? And you can just go into your database and you can plug in C fold to c-bet and you could immediately read off the number of how often on average you've gotten folds to your c-bet. And now once you have that number, 40%, that's something you can use. That's something you can compute. And if you're having trouble with that, that's in the computation section of the math and heads up, sit and goes pack. And you can actually figure out, you know, should you be c-betting your error? Is it better to give up with your error or to c-bet it? And, and you know, that's the power of having these numbers and re ranges directly from our population. Because in the end, in order to make the most money readless, we need to be exploiting our population. And in order to do that, we need to know what the population does. And so once we know our population ranges. Once we can put villain on a range, even though we're readless, you know, we're going to be able to make the most money when readless. And now, of course, you're going to tell me, well, you know, poker, it's about making reads and about improving your game, you know, once you have reads. Well, that's true too. And what that's the cool thing about putting numbers on things is that we can actually use our population model to, to find out what reads are and to make adjustments. And you know, that's going to be a whole other topic. And that's a, a very big focus of the math and heads up sit and goes pack is talking about Bayesian statistics and how we can use it to make adjustments to our readless ranges. But that's a topic for another video. And the cool thing is, is once we've constructed this model of the population in PT4, we can use it really easily. We save ourselves so much time when we are studying. When we study the population, it means we save time because we don't have to spend 20 minutes looking through our database, figuring out how to find the average percent of time that villain's folding to our c-bets. We can just immediately plug in, fold to c-bet, and find the average. And we can even look at different ranges. We can find ranges for, for which people are calling our open shoves or open shoving. And so this will allow us to really pinpoint our readless play. And one of the final examples that I use is short stack push fold poker. I use this population model to find maximally exploitive ranges for push fold and not only readless. I use it also to find how to make adjustments. And so that's going to be something for another video, something to look forward to. This has been Coffee for HUSNG.com. Uh, contact me at coffee at gmail.com. Disclaimer. Coffee is addicting and unhealthy, and therefore not something you should be putting in your French press. Consider using herbal teas instead. These will still give you something nice to drink and make in your French press without the adverse health effects. If you'd like some herbal tea recommendations, contact my wife.